No, and that's like that's a huge thing with like you know the hashtag girls can too. When I called Teresa and Jesse one day and was like, "Hey, can I use this? Can, you know, yeah. I want to like I want to be a part of this and show women out there. It doesn't matter what age or you know how young, how old you are. Right, go out there and take the chance. You know, like it's so funny. I found this necklace right here that um the fearless necklace me and my mom mm. found it when we were up at a doctor's appointment for my I Lyme wore, disease I wore mine yeah. today too. there you go <laughs> <laughs> i'm not feeling fearless. I, figured, I figured she would come up in conversation about this is the shirt oh, i'm wearing today yes I love that. yes so i mean i tell myself every day never say no never yeah. say no Hustle. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And today we have... I'm Brooke Jensen. Oh my gosh. We are so excited that you're here, Brookie. We've been doing this or <laughs> trying to do this for like over a year. And what we're going to talk about today is understanding where you've come from and how racing has been such a big part of your life since you was a little girl. Little, little, right? Little, little, little. little. <laughs> oh I my mean, gosh. I would say... Off-road racing is truly like in your blood. I mean, you pretty much grew up in the desert, right? But you're also doing a keynote speaking too. So we're going to touch on yeah, that too. How cool. Definitely. How cool. It's definitely. Absolutely There's so amazing. much to uncover with you. I know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. So tell everybody. Tell everybody. Tell everybody. Tell it, the whole story. The whole thing. <laughs> we'll give you a platform. We're going to no. be here a while. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. So when is it actually that you got behind the wheel, behind the handlebars? Where did you start? What did you start with? Were they little mini bikes? Were they little cars? What did you do? Yeah, so um, I think it all really started around the age of like nine years old. Um my dad would always take me out to the desert races. I'd always see Teresa out there when we were little. Like, she's watched me grow up since I was little. And uh, it's, always, it's always been in my blood, I feel like. And I think I definitely lived my dream through my dad. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, nine years old, Lucas Oil came around. And I was, like, all for the trophy carts. I begged my parents. And they were like, no, you know, we can't afford it. It's just, you know, not in the budget. And then, boom, there was a trophy cart ready for me to race. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> gosh that's amazing that's you know I the interesting it. thing is uh, a little sidebar note how to become a millionaire in racing is starting with two million dollars right yes so, oh, yeah, so I understand yeah. that especially wow that's super inspiring too that your parents were fully behind you at the age of nine yeah well right? I think it took a persuading them just a little bit but <laughs> yeah <laughs> took, took some uh took some chores and <laughs> being good and having good grades and I just kind of came about and I think my parents knew you know I tried soccer I tried volleyball I tried dance and it just wasn't my cup of tea I didn't really yeah. fit in those sports really well and so uh racing came around and it was like oh yeah I'm all in <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is it yeah. and you know it's funny because like your family like that you're like your dad he's always been right there he hasn't really done the racing thing but he, but he's always like he's the fastest one out there and stuff and so you learn from you know one of the best right there you know but you just loved it you loved being around your family and I, I think it, you know for me personally that's what it's always been to me like being out in the desert it's 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 different thing but then racing that's a whole nother story so like why did you think that was just something you needed to do like instead of doing just the yeah. weekend at the desert yeah right? yeah yeah definitely it I just I think being like raised around it and like you know we'd go out to the desert my dad would just he was the dad that was all sure here's the keys you know get in and drive <laughs> you're gonna figure it out one way totally. or not right? <laughs> And so I think just like him having the trust in me to like, you know, mm. from such a young age, like it just really, really made me want to like have a purpose driving in something or some, you know, some type of vehicle. And it just, it just went from there. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. So what was the first race like? Gosh. Do you remember? Can you remember <laughs> I do. all the details? <laughs> I do. Right, right. Were you nervous? Tell I was us everything. extremely nervous. <laughs> yeah. And um, I knew that <laughs> going into the weekend, we were getting out there like somewhat later. So like I didn't have as much practice. Okay. And um, 
everything was brand new. My suit was brand new. My helmet was brand new. Just that new smell. And <laughs> it was and all was so that a new. Good thing? It was a good thing. It okay. really was. Um, but it was just like, I just know that butterfly feeling. Like mm-hmm. you did not sleep the night before that race. Yeah. yeah. But it was so much fun. And I knew from there that day that like, oh yeah, I'm meant to do this. So you finished the race without any consequence, right? Absolutely Every- not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead. Uh, just like life. <laughs> just dish. I don't I remember if this was like the first or second or third race but I just right. remember that like there was one time that like I seriously just drove somebody off the track oh <laughs> they black flagged me I just kept going <laughs> I didn't know you were new yeah you're like my name I got mentioned I to do that but you were yeah. nine yeah I was the star of the show out there oh my I gosh mean. of course you were <laughs> I love that your parents everyone told get off you that. the track because it's all about Here me right now yeah. Yeah. oh yeah I was not coming. getting off that track I did not get it <laughs> okay okay that. so obviously practice and then the flag drops. You've got butterflies. You've now run somebody off of the track. <laughs> That's did, funny. You, did you make friends? Yeah, my dad was really proud of me, too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he was pretty proud of me. <laughs> he liked your spirit of competition. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, girl, That's go get, get, it. Yeah. get it. My sister was spotting for me in the spotter stand. She got kicked out. <laughs> we had a good first race. I'm not oh, going to lie. We were all in from there. Oh, my gosh. So that experience just said, okay, so... It can't get any worse, right? right? No. It can only go I up learned my there. lesson from there, though. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Everybody knew me as, like, the aggressive driver. Watch out, Brooke's behind you. Like, oh. she's coming. So did they, did Has that little... changed, though, ever since, or no? No. No. Okay. No. So this is a tactic that's worked for her. Especially, like, in desert racing when we, like, you know, go out to qualify or something and or just, like, the starting order. And, you know, I got, like, Cowboy Cerrone. He's right in front of me. He's like, don't you touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> I touch you. I touch you if I want to touch oh, you. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Didn't Dale Earnhardt, if you ain't rubbing, rubbing you ain't rubbing, raising. Yeah. Right? Go. Good. Good. Oh, she's channeling her inner Dale. I totally, love it. Totally. Totally. So walk us through. So how many races did you wind up doing your first year? I don't, I can't remember exactly, but I know I started in I junior this. one racing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, from there, you know, I was kind of, I'm not going to lie, mid-pack. Yeah. And then um, I, I did but get But you're in, learning so yeah. much at that point. <laughs> and junior one racing is like, um, I feel like I was kind of at the peak of my age limit and level there that okay. like I needed to move up in order to have more power. And, and junior ones, I mean, you're literally reaching for the steering wheel and pushing forward because you're just you know, the momentum of trying, you're trying to keep trying and to keep, the yeah. older you get and you're racing keep. against, you know, six, seven years old, seven year olds. It's yeah. like, it They're was time a to go lighter. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. From there, um, I moved into mod carts and that's what I really remember. Um, yeah. my dad bought me a mod cart and it was the only mod cart out there with a, um, a foot clutch. So everybody else had a hand clutch and I had to learn to do, <laughs> okay. you know, the three pedals and as shifting, you know, so, yeah. um, that was where I feel like I really learned you have to work for what you want. And yeah. that was, you know, I don't have the best thing out here, but I'm out here having fun and yeah. I'm kicking your ass. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Do you think that there, because you had to learn the foot clutch early on, do you think that gave you a kind of a leg up to some degree when people are switching from a hand clutch to foot clutch? I mean, yeah. that's, there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Oh, 100%. Age. Yeah. yeah, 100%. It, it really helped because once I... We sold that car and we got a newer car that was, you know, I like hey. that your dad's really on board with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh totally. yeah. yeah. But uh, once we bought a new car and we switched to a hand clutch, it was like, whoa, this is like driving a Cadillac. Like, <laughs> really? I'm not used to this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was like okay. driving with one hand and like, oh, yeah. Right. But you're much more versatile, though, too. Because that now yeah. she makes a better driver, yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Holy cow. So that was... What level was that? Mod cart. Mod cart. Yeah. So started in junior one, moved up to mod cart. I had two mod carts. And then by my second mod cart was when I started really like hitting the podium. And, you know, we were going for a championship and we were traveling across the world. I got taken out of high school and what they mean, they were like, hey, you got way too many absences. (laughs) Like this isn't going to work. So you were in high school at that time. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I was moving from eighth grade up to high school and they just said, you know, hey, I think it's the time. You go homeschooled, and I was doing my homework oh, on the wow. road. You know, we were gone wow. for three weeks at a time, traveling from 
California to Utah to Wisconsin, you know, like just all, all over the, the place. Yeah, yeah, Missouri, right. like everywhere. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, chasing championships. That's what it was about. Wow. <laughs> I love a supportive mom and dad that are they're, yeah. they're so eager to help push that along, right? Definitely. No, and, and like like Brooke said, like I, I've grown up with her family and I've, I've been around them. And, and I think, you know, your whole family, it has this great tight dynamic mm. that they are, are behind you guys, like doing, tr- trying to help you... So, you know, support you in what you do. But with that being said, they make you work for it too. So yeah. that's always been great to see that, that you guys always have to go out there and really, you know, work for, for what you need to, to do as well. Baja Forge, signature vehicle builds and off-road products built to forge your own path. Baja Forge was basically made because we loved off-roading. We loved the open roads. If you're looking for off-road products to help you get out on the terrain, Visit BajaForge.com. Follow us on Instagram at BajaForged for our latest builds. Since 1987, GTS Customs has specialized in Resto Mod Corvettes. From widened bodies to pro touring vehicles with all today's modern technology. If you've got a Corvette, an old Corvette, and you want to make it drive like something new, contact gtscustoms.com yeah and most of the time we were traveling the world you know with with the mod cart like my dad worked he wasn't home so yeah i had to figure it out by myself and i just remember i'd always send him videos like okay where does this go or oh. hey dad look what i did you know i pressure washed or you know i tore the whole car down so that when you get home on the weekends we can go through the car and you know it's ready for for the racer i'd load the whole trailer by myself you know i didn't have somebody to just you know here this is how you back up a trailer keep coming back honey yeah. no it was like hey you're home by yourself you better yeah, figure, figure it out, it out. he's <laughs> definitely <laughs> one of those I for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. figure it out or yep. we're not going. <laughs> yep. And that speaks so much to your your being part of your race team, right? Yeah, yeah 100%. Oh it goodness. was it was me, my mom, and my dad, and, you know, our family. My grandparents supported me, and they would come to every single race. And <sighs> my grandpa helped out when he could. You know, there was times that, like, my dad was working, and he could not get there on Friday when we were practicing. And Or me and my mom traveled across the world all the way to Missouri. And yeah. He was at work, and he had to fly in. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah. Now, does your sister, she's younger than you, right? She's older she's than me. Older. Yeah, I have an older she sister. She didn't have the racing bug. No, she um, she traveled uh, playing volleyball. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So she did um, volleyball all the way up to college. Yeah. So, oh, that's so yeah, but cool. she's been there to support me and go through it. I want her to get in the co-driving seat, but I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I might have a sister Tiff in the car, but we'll find out. I love that. <laughs> a sister right? Tiff. I think right. that's yeah. so beautiful. Well, and that's what like Rebel Rally, when they do it, every, everyone kind of talks about like, so how's it going so far? And that really means like, has there been any major fights yet? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I know that just from doing Optima with Greg and sitting in the car right. and going yeah. for a rally <laughs> oh, in Vegas, yeah. and I give the wrong direction because they're tearing up the freeway, right? And you're like, oh, uh huh, Sister Tiff. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we need to hashtag, hashtag I, yeah. Sister Tiff. <laughs> oh my god. So out of like all the racing that you have done, is there a certain series that you like the best or a car that you were like, this was the best car or the track that you actually love to be I on? I really liked the Lucas Oil stuff. Yeah. Um, it's so but different. It's not around anymore. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's gone. Yeah. That's why we made the transition right before it fell apart. But yeah. I just loved the fan orientation. You know, we were so close to the fans and the fans knew you. And um, yeah. we made so many friends there. Like after racing, yeah. it was like, hey, come to our pit. We're hanging out or you know hey we're we're barbecuing over here or if you needed something they were right there to help I think we were known as the parts trailer nice. <laughs> everybody knew my dad had extra yeah, parts yeah. and they would awesome. always come over and, and, and he'd help and oh, he'd help yeah. figure and he knew oh, yeah. how to do everything we yeah, would put our like stuff MacGyver. aside yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. help them so yeah. um I loved the Lucas Oil stuff I really I really don't know if there was a certain track that I really liked Cranham Wisconsin is insane yeah um, everyone which, talks about that yeah it's my favorite moment because that's 
seriously where I met Jesse Combs yeah. and that was like I will forever hold that place in my heart because I remember she just came up to you and I was like oh my gosh that's Jesse Combs like oh, oh my gosh she yeah. was probably freaking out over yeah. you oh my gosh so yeah like I love Crandon and I got to spend almost two months there um wow a, like pay to arrive and drive kind of thing for somebody so it was like I don't know I just that place keeps I keep coming back to that place. That's yeah, awesome. and is it mostly like like a lot of people say Crandon? It's just because it's kind of like you mentioned Lucas Oil. It's like the community there. Yes, like it's different when you go there because everyone is really like everyone comes out for it. And there's it's like thousands the whole of town. Fans. Yeah, thousands yeah. and thousands of fans and the parade and you know it's it's so cool and it's so like relaxed there. I feel like things back there in such a small town are just like eh, you know. Well, and that's deal. the big thing. Yeah, but then you guys all coming out, that yeah. is the big deal. Right, yeah. You know, that the is part of The whole town shuts down yeah. for us. Yeah, So I that love it. Ha- that has to be a heady experience, yeah. right? When oh, yeah. When you think yeah. about it and, and you figure at your age, you're, y- you're a young woman mm-hmm. at that point, you know, still... D- closer to being a child than a <laughs> yeah did you anti- <laughs> did you anticipate good. your racing turning into something was this something that was like in the forefront of your mind that you were dreaming about this or was it just the act of racing and all this other stuff came along with it I think it was more of like I'm gonna make this happen and that was like every like piece of my journey even though if it was rough or easy it was like this is a part of my story yeah kind of thing and um I mean Teresa's been a huge you know inspiration in my life and it's like I want to do that I want to be that I want to become that and I think like at that point was like my sparking point of like oh yeah I got this I can do this I like wow. That. And yeah. then the fans though on top of that. Yes, was they bring that, you up. Okay. <laughs> so so That's a good thing. This yeah. was in your in your wheelhouse then. It wasn't something that you were um frightened of it no. was something that you were easily embracing she embra- yeah yeah, embraced it. yeah. Oh, that's more that's about beautiful what beautiful yeah. because a lot of times people young women they don't have the confidence to carry that I mean I'm speaking from my my own situation right. I would have never had the confidence I don't believe to kind of be thrust into that because you know ooh, yeah no and that's like that's a huge thing with like you know the hashtag girls can too when I called Teresa and Jesse one day and was like, hey, can I use this? You know, I want to like, I want to be a part of this and show women out there. It doesn't matter what age or, you know, how young, how old you are. Right. Go out there and take the chance. You know, like, it's so funny. I found this necklace right here that um, the fearless necklace, me and my mm. mom found it when we were up at a doctor's appointment for my I Lyme wore, disease. I wore mine yeah. today too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling fearless. I figured, I figured she would come up in conversation about this is the shirt oh, I'm wearing today. Yes. I love that. Yes. So, I mean, I tell myself every day, never say no. Never yeah. say no. You yeah. know, like any opportunity that comes up, always say yes because you never know where it's going to take you. You know, you've got to be fearless in order to to live the life and dreams you want to live. You mentioned something about Lyme disease. Yes. Tell us a little bit and tell our viewers, obviously, a little bit about what that is and well, how it's... And how it even, ha- like, yeah, the the journey of, of what even knowing right. it, you even had I'm it. Like, and I what... hope you guys got all day because... <laughs> Well, we but, do. but that's the thing is like yeah. people don't even realize like, no, right, and you, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, like trying to explain it to people is just so hard because so many people don't understand. Um, so when I was four years old, I was riding a quad. Um, we live in Pinion Hills, California in the desert. And my dad took us to a Creek and I was riding, a riding the quad out there. And somehow I cannot put a pinpoint when it happened, but, um, I got bit by a tick on my eyelid. Oof. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So somehow in, you know, our little town, it crawled its way to my eyelid and yeah. Wow. So I was super sick and, um, being only four years old, you know, I have no idea what's going on with my body. I'm, you know, still trying to figure out how to talk and, you know, 
the smallest, easiest, simple things we do in life, you know, you're just developing at that age. Right. And, um, I, you know, would, I would throw up and then I'd go outside and play in the dirt and then I'd come back inside and then I'd sleep for three hours and then I'd have a fever and then I wouldn't eat. And it was like, my mom had no idea what was going on with me. And, um, I want to say it was that day. Um, she gave me a bath and she laid me down to put lotion on me. And she noticed like, she, she explains it as like my teardrop like, you know, when you open your eyelid, like that mm-hmm. teardrop you can see mm-hmm. looked like it was like in the center of my eye. And she's like, that mm. is so weird. So she like pulled my eyelid down. And we actually have a friend who has Lyme disease. And mm. so my mom was like helping her through her journey when they were younger. So she kind of like knew what Lyme disease was. Mm. Um, and so she pulled the tick off of me mm. and uh, with, t- with tweezers and she froze it. And we went to Kaiser the next morning and... Um, I think that was the worst experience I've ever had. Yeah. Oh my god! You know, they, they took the tick, they, they tested me and I tested positive four out of five strands. And in order for them to treat you, it's gotta be five out of five. So they didn't treat me and they didn't want to. They told my mom that I was a four year old depressed child and there was nothing oh they gosh. could do for me. Yay, Kaiser. Yeah. So if you think, I don't know if you know if I like oh Kaiser god. or not. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so. I don't think you're. I don't think you're the first person that is. Oh, for shared, sure. Uh, bit of negativity. Yeah. So um, from there, you know, my mom just knew exactly what she had to do. She put my health first out of yeah. anything, and uh, we went the naturopathic way. Um, we found a doctor I up like in San that. Francisco, okay. um, and I worked with a doctor in San Francisco and in Yerba Linda. And um, they kind of just, you know, started treating Lyme from there. And I struggled. I really did throughout school. You know, I had an IEP. Um, I didn't, I was in special education, you know, mild to moderate, just, you know, extra help is what I needed. Yeah. Um, and there was some like the Because you were having things. the physical effects yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. I was sick. This. I would fall asleep in class. Okay. Like I would um, too, but yeah. not because. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knew like when I was Sorry. sick, the underneath of my eyes would get black and they're like, oh yeah, Brooke's sick today. Okay. Yeah. So throughout elementary school, I struggled and I was really, really sick. And then I got better. Um, the beginning of middle school, I was put in remission. Um, we just kind of did the homeopathic type of treatment and it really helped. And then, um, once I got a little bit older and um, things change, yeah. uh, the line flared again. And okay. since then, I've just kind of been um, tackling it. Yeah. So okay. It's been insane. It's, I mean, it, so there's the, new symptoms every day. Yeah. So the old remedies yeah. have to be updated yeah. and, and, and there's no adjusted. Cure. There's no cure for Lyme wow. disease. Yeah. So does this attack your autoimmune system? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have chronic Lyme. Um, they wouldn't treat me. And so because of that, it turned into chronic, chronic Lyme. I will have it for the rest of my life. If it's in remission or if it's active or, you know, it, ju- it just depends on my health and what I'm taking. You are such a bold young lady and so well-spoken Thank you. that I hate to say it, Lyme disease couldn't have a better spokesperson to share that journey because you are an active woman. You're not sitting by the sidelines. No, I can't. (laughs) I can't let myself die like that. No, I think that's beautiful. And I think that's where racing came into play is it's like, when I put a helmet on, I feel nothing. Like I just mm. have, like my mom says, my eyes glaze over and it's like, it's go time. Like yeah. <laughs> it's screw like Lyme completely. disease, it's out the window. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It's your, so, isn't that crazy it's that your escape. mindset yeah. just changes to that and oh, you're yeah. like, the focus is so different. It's insane. And I've yeah. raced, you know, so sick before. Like yeah. I've been holding on to that steering wheel. Like, you know, when you're tired after a long drive, you're just like barely in. And it's been there before. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. But I'm doing a lot better. Lately That's has good. been real. I mean, this year I'm taking my taking the time to focus on myself. And I told myself, you know, I, you've always been one to put people above you and in front of you. And I just told right. myself, you know, I've got to get my health right in order, you know, yeah. if I want to have kids or, you know, right. live the life I want to live. I can't be sick the rest of my life. Right. And yes. so this year it's it's game on. It's Treatment strong and good. <laughs> we're gonna kick Lyme's butt. Love I really it. hope. Love good. It. Yeah, yeah, I really hope. And one of the things that you say, being a keynote speaker, now we'll get to that. <laughs> yes. But the but your condition is not your conclusion, yes. which is such a great strong statement, and that's what like 
like you said, you're out there and, and even though you're dealing with it, you're still out in the seat. Yes. You know? Yes. I tell these kids, you know, at each speaking event, you know, I start with my story and tell them that, you know, I race and sure, everything seems so badass and it's so cool what right. you do. And then seems. I get into like, <laughs> yeah, I get into like, you know, I understand what you guys are going through and they just sit there and they're just like, oh, wow. Like she, she understands because there's so many kids out here that they're going through so many different things that they don't feel like they're understood by their friends or their teachers or their parents right. or, you know, like grandparents and your condition's not your conclusion where you are right now is not where you're going to go and who you're going to become. And that it just, it, for some reason really just touches their souls and yeah. gets into their brains. And I really hope it motivates them. I mean, they motivate me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's kind of yeah. like how you motivate me. And I'm sure you do it with Teresa. <laughs> totally. As well. Totally. Oh, I mean yeah. the fact that, like you said, you get in that seat no matter what. I mean that, yeah, that right there is inspiration for all right. of us. Yeah. For Taking sure. Taking that commitment really to heart and yeah. very seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Huge. Okay, keynote. Get going. I want to know more. <laughs> How did that start? Tell us where that oh first my gosh. That little, you know, what, what are the, the steps that led up to that? So there was a, there was a Lyme disease event that um, somebody I know who has Lyme disease, their mom put on. And it was just a small event. You know, they're just trying to get the word out there. Nothing huge. And they were like, hey, will you come speak? And I was like, oh, gosh, you know, like, sure, I can... I can record to myself, share about but yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Share about, you know, hey, it's like you, you need to share your yeah, story kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I don't know, like <laughs> I'm nervous. I was what, 14, 15. Oh, wow. And um, I was like, sure, you know, I will do it for the girls and their, their daughters are really sick, you know, far past what I'm sick with. And I was like, I can do it. And so we brought the car out, you know, um, my mom and Brian, my boyfriend came with me and. We got matching shirts and just try to make the best out of the day. <laughs> I like that. And, matching um, shirts. That's cute. I stood on the stage and I, I started to speak and I just got so emotional that it was like, I mm. couldn't really say what like I was trying to say. Yeah. And um, I went, I actually, after I spoke, I mean, everybody said I did a good job, but in my head I was like, oh no, that was horrible. I like, I made fun right. of myself kind of, I felt mm. like I went in the bathroom and I just cried. I was oh, like, yeah. this is so horrible that I have to like tell people we need support. Yeah. Like you should never have to go through that. No. You should never go through that alone. And from that day on, I knew that like, this is something I have to do. Yeah. I have to do this because I felt that sure, you know, we all, we all get in our heads sometimes to be like, why me? Like, right. why is this happening to me? Why, right. why did I drop this? Or, you know, yeah. right. and it's like, I felt like God put me in this place for a reason and I'm there to, you know, show people what Lyme disease is and what you can do with your life, even though if it's not Lyme disease. Yeah. Right. So I just, uh, I talked to... By not to, giving up or giving in. Oh, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like where you are right now, it's not where you're going. You've got to be right. better than what where you are. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, our really good friend, Kurt Chase, who's now going to be my sister's husband's dad <laughs> he's a teacher and uh he's all hey you want to come speak at the middle school and I was all oh gosh this is actually <laughs> happening so I spoke at the middle school and from there it just popped off and just oh, keep doing that's them amazing and, yeah I love it yeah and your crowds have grown quite huge significantly yeah. Yeah. the last post that I saw because you recently did a keynote speech yes. and that was a pretty darn big crowd yeah and it was it was really cool because it was at a uh, asb leadership conference so it was middle schoolers oh, very cool. yeah who've been selected you know out of their class to yeah. do leadership stuff and they already have a head on their shoulders of you know being a leader and that's kind of put in their head and so like um it was really cool to speak to them because they truly listened you know they really cared yeah. about like inspiration and motivation and stuff like that so it was it was really cool that was probably one of my favorite ones we got to bring the car and the kids sat in the car and it was rad it was really rad that's, that's awesome, awesome. Cool. yeah that's so cool to hear holy cow so much I fun I right? love that. I love that. So, I so love you're just that. getting started on that journey, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, no, it's definitely something new, and I learn every day. Yeah. And um, 
I think there's so much more improvement to do um, yeah. in so many different things. You know, each group is so different with these kids. You know, you're talking to middle schoolers. Like, the mat- mat- or maturity sure. level is, yeah. you know, yeah. it Can depends. you keep their attention? Yeah. What, exactly. what am I going to yeah. do to, And yeah. when I see them, you know, start moving around, sure. it's like, oh, we're going to go back to racing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, and I've what, got better. What captures their attention, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, different slides, important. different videos, like, different pictures, like, all that stuff yeah. helps so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love that. And the last time, you know, the last time I saw, I don't know if you, (laughs) you saw her since then, but we saw you at the Mint. Yes. 400. That was so much fun. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. That was the first time I've like been at the Mint and not raced it. Okay, it's so, the first time I've ever been at the mint. <laughs> right. So it was kind of fun. I didn't never have racing as an option. So it was. Tell fun. us about that. What What were you doing there? And because there's a, yeah. you're kind of creating your own little power couple racing. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so oh, Brian, my boyfriend, uh, co-drives in a trophy truck. He does. In a spec truck. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, we kind of, you know, I've kind of like stepped back and like being in the driver's seat all the time and him supporting me. I'm like supporting him in a way like, so it's kind of cool. So did you guys <laughs> meet through racing or how did you meet? Yes. yes. Oh, we oh, met. I wanna, I don't, I'm actually asking because I didn't know that. So go yes, ahead. We actually met in Utah. Ooh. I know, right? We're both yeah. from California. We met in Utah. Uh, Stranger I things. Race. <laughs> oh, imagine that. <laughs> Yeah, he and you was, were racing, and he was racing. I was racing, and he was working for uh, Brenthal Industries. Okay, and so they were racing a pro light out there, and he was kind of like their main guy, you know, working on it, doing all that kind of stuff. And uh, after the racing, I actually rolled really bad that mm. weekend, and um, I can't remember if he came up to me at the pits first and was like, "Oh, you know, hey, you know, hey, are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. He's like, "Ooh, she's Kinda hot." Mutual, <laughs> probably. <Sorry. laughs> And then we uh, haven't talked about the story or what? <laughs> a few times, <laughs> <Jesus>, probably. <laughs> I got it a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, later that night, we went uh, go kart racing because there's a go kart track there. Nice. Yeah, like a K1 or MB2 yeah, or something. Yeah, kind of like yeah. the outside. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he literally hands me his hat, his phone, his wallet, his chapstick, and his keys, and goes, "Here you go." And I was like, "I don't know who you are." <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll hold this for you, but... Peek through the wall. Yeah, right? No, kidding. And then after that, I literally... Uh, gosh, we... Me, him, and Bradley Morris jumped on a 70, and I was on the very back. Bradley was on the handlebars, and I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And then we all hung out at the pit, and... Down? Yeah. No. Uh, oh, man, I was a little scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was like, wait, nice. this is mine. Why are you guys on my bike? It's <laughs> your own. <laughs> and Brian was driving? Yes. Oh, I see. That's I why. Yeah. That's uh-huh. where it comes in. Uh-huh. Total, there was a total, yeah. There That's was a total mission in play. Yes, Seven exactly. years later. And it, it, for you guys that don't know this, he's sitting off camera. Yeah. And he's smiling and giggling. And <laughs> but, yeah. That's perfect. Yep. One of my biggest supporters, he helps me through. Yeah, and you guys, good. That's what I was going to say. We needed our producer to get (laughs) every once in a while he's co driving too. (laughs) Yes, yeah. So he is my co driver. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. He started, uh, he started being like the little, like, I'd say, I'm not going to say the word, but, you know, shop B around. (laughs) And he kind of moved up. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I like it. (laughs) Not like the pool boy. (laughs) Like my boy. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, then he started getting in the getting in the razor with me, and I'm not going to lie, he got out for a little bit just because, you know, it's, it's hard to find a professional professional side and a relationship side okay we got struggled you. with that a little you. bit i got yeah. you you guys have been together for what five we years no we're going on almost seven seven years yeah. you're not old enough to have a boyfriend for seven years stop it <laughs> yeah i was 15 <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah he co-drives with me now and because you've figured and everything, you've figured out that how, that <laughs> dynamic and how it works. But I mm-hmm. think that that's. I really, think Teresa knows a lot of the story. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really. But 
I think it's a beautiful testament <laughs> to understanding a relationship. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you're going to put it through something like co-driving, I mean, right. that is a big, uh, yes, testament to a relationship. Yes. And it was standing that. Yeah. 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 And I think him and Jason get along so well because they're so calm that it's yeah. like they just let us go do our thing and just yes. like, oh, That's they're going to be them, you know. Okay. <laughs> they stand in the back just, ah. But I think it also, I think that when I started racing, it was like, obviously, I was, it was late in life and I had to start communicating differently. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I think that racing point. gives you an opportunity to be more clear, more concise. You can't just st- say, oh, this thing is sticking. Yeah. Right. This what thing is sticking? Well, I don't know. It's just sticking. You right. can't say those things. Right. Yeah. You have to be well, a little bit more. And it's so hard too. Cause it's like, if you think about it when, you know, you're in the kitchen, you're all, Hey, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. What do you want for dinner? And then it turns into this, like, Oh, I don't know. I asked you, what do you want for dinner? And it's the same thing with the yeah. car. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Again, Hey, this <laughs> thing's right like, now. <laughs> yeah. It's broke. It's not- what do we do? Well, what's broke? Oh, I don't know. I just hear a clicking noise. And <laughs> yeah. to a regular person who's your co-driver, you're going to like, uh, you're not as mute. Yes. You know what I mean? You're yes. more mutual. Just like, I don't know. We should figure it out. Instead, I'm like, figure this out. I don't know what the problem yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to, I'm supposed to trust you. <laughs> I don't know. It's broken. It's something that's broken. Yeah. This is real life. <laughs> yeah. So that, so, so basically dad's not <laughs> actually good. having to be that person, yeah. right? You learned, you yes, learned those 100%. steps to some degree. And now it's Brian's your guy. Well, he's also obviously Brenthal's guy. So. I mean, well, so yeah. he kind of knows a lot. Yeah. Right? So like he, with him racing <laughs> in the thing, truck. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's his thing. Yeah. So like him racing in the truck, it's helped too, you know, cause like he's gotten in the, in another vehicle with someone else, mm, you know, yeah. like, I've been in the vehicle with too, someone yeah. else and it's like, oh yeah, no, I don't want anybody else in the car. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So okay. he's good at what he does too. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 Oh, 100%. Yeah. He can deal with me. Nobody okay. else can put uh, up with me. But my a mom co-driver said. is a really important part of it too that, uh, you know. Huge. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. You have to have so much trust in them, you know, when you're, you're racing and. <laughs> I've seen some of those videos. Yeah, you can't see in the dust. Go, 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 like, go, go. Yeah, I see There's straight. There's a 90. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Full trust in them. trust in others people like that for sure i mean yeah. you got both people's lives in the vehicle you and yes. your co-driver and yes. it's yes. like oh man <laughs> yeah then when your stomach drops you're like oh gosh i hope nothing happens <laughs> right <laughs> that well, urge feeling yeah, like, oh, yeah. please nothing be there yeah <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh yes. yeah no ditch please please no ditch, <laughs> no ditch. No ditch. <laughs> those <Yes>. hurt <laughs> oh boy yeah and the suspension's a little different on what he's co-driving to what yes. you're co-driving yes. right oh yeah what what it can soak up up and right. what it can oh yeah. And, yeah. and the speeds yeah too. correct I mean, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. so that's a that's kind yes. of a whew. yeah well and it's crazy too because it's like i needed somebody in the car that knew my health because yeah. if things were to yeah. go wrong at one point, point yeah. somebody's got to know what's going on with me. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, sure, you can wear this medical bracelet that tells you what you're allergic to and the 10 hundred million antibiotics and supplements and right. medications you're on. Right. But like, you know, if something was to really go wrong and go south, like, and we were to have a medical attention, like they need to know what's going on yeah. with me, you know, or, yeah. hey, I passed out in the middle of a race. I was having seizures at, you know, 14, 15 years old. And mm. luckily I don't have those anymore. But like, yeah. if that was to happen in the middle of a race, like he's been through me with those seizures yeah. and it's like, to I know need what somebody. To do. Yeah, yes. 100%. Yes. yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I mean, it's the same type of thing, like being in a race, you have, he has to know how to respond right yeah. away. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's good. There are, there's tips in the car. Right? <laughs> we don't this talk about those. Too, still. <laughs> Just like, yeah. hey, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. <laughs> well, you said you were hungry. <laughs> You've got to yeah. want something. And then you tell them what you want. And they're like, well, I didn't really think I wanted that. <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> He's over there smiling. <laughs> oh, dude, it's not, this is not new. We Anybody who's been in this in a relationship. <laughs> even when your girlfriend, your, your girlfriend, where are we going to go for lunch? Where are we going to, even when I go with yep. my best friend walking, I'm like, where do we want to go? <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not asking me. Yeah, I'm asking you. I decided <laughs> oh. the last six times, <laughs> right? Yes. Oh my gosh. So what's coming up? What racing are you doing? What, yeah, what's, so, your, what's your story? story lady i'm not gonna lie Sorry. um <laughs> big story but a big one <laughs> you're not gonna what are you not gonna lie most of her life ahead of her, man. i know She's got what's a your big story? One. i'm just thinking for this year what's your story for this year <laughs> okay well that i'm helps. not gonna lie um i think the motorsports industry is kind of at like a weird 
turning point right now and I feel like it's coming I think you're right yeah I definitely feel like there's either got to be something new or something different or these all these different you know event coordinators got to come together or do something because you know these entries just aren't keeping up and it's hard because if there's 10 different race people that you know put on organizations you mean yeah series thank you yeah and it's like well, there's only 10 people there because there's another race next weekend or yeah. there's a race the same so weekend. So they need to coordinate. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of hard just trying to figure out like, hey, what series are we going to run? Where are the sponsors? Where's the money? You know? Where, yeah. Where so are the fans? Yeah. Because, Where's the growth? Yes. Yeah, As right? Sarah Price was, we were having the same conversation with her before, probably like two years ago, I think. And right around the same time, like you said, like Lucas Oil is gone. Like, yeah. like there's a lot of uh, fluctuation in all of those things right now. Yeah. So we're just kind of, you know, I kind of stepped back. I told myself, you know, my health is most important right now. I've right. got to figure out what's going on with my health. You know, I can't live the way I'm living. And how to, yeah. yeah. And how so, to combat um, that for the next few years. Yeah. You know, for this 100%. new iteration. Yeah. Right? So there's been a couple different opportunities that have arose. And, you know, I don't want to talk too soon. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, I definitely think that we might won, or run one race this year in something with a lot of horsepower. So nice. okay, cool. that's kind of what I'm cool. hoping for. Um, do it for a good cause. This cool. one race right. that we want to do, um, right. the powder puff. So okay. um, we were kind of thinking that, but I need a lot more seat time in this vehicle in order to feel comfortable and yeah. in order to, you know, figure Make out. sense. Yeah, out it's it. completely yeah, yeah. different. I've drove it once and it's completely different from what I've been doing. Oh yeah, the dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, that's kind of in the works. We'll see, you know. Um, and then me and my dad, we chat all the time and we've talked about, you know, building a new car. We've talked about moving to a different racing style. So it's kind of okay. it's kind of all up in the air. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm down for anything. Seat time is Sometimes seat time. Doesn't matter what it's in, right? Right. But we all need, you know, those moments to reflect sometimes yes. and take a step back and kind of reassess that. So I'm yeah. glad you're doing that. That's, That's kind rad. of where, where I'm at. I, yeah. I like I said, I don't really put myself first. And I just told myself, you know, hey, with keynote speaking taking off and um, different things, you know, I'm going to school to become a teacher. So, yeah. That. So it's like with school, work, racing, adulting, keynote speaking. <laughs> like, oh, girl, you need some time. <laughs> yeah, I just take the you adulting see my and calendar. Put that over there. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't change for us. Adulting. <laughs> I need to learn something. That, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> so, Forget yeah. that. Just kind of oh, taking so time cool. to myself, figuring it out. Um, I don't know. We, we've talked about going back into she, short course. She's still quite young and has yeah. a no. very big life. Ahead <laughs> she of her, does. So. They're sorry. <laughs> yeah. For the viewers that don't know, yeah. I'm 21. Well, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> She'll be back in a, in a But your race birthday's seat. coming yeah, up, though, I'm isn't sure it? Just came, it was in January. Okay. So I just turned okay. 21. Okay. Because yeah. I got that. Thank you for the card, too. She's <laughs> I love her. So it's like my mom always says, you know, she's. 21 going on 40 like she's <laughs> she's so much older in her mindset than yeah. she is yeah. in her body <laughs> because you've had to deal a lot yeah with your, you know with health through racing. Lyme and things like that yeah yeah so I don't know I think I think racing too matures of course, of oh, course. Sure. Hugely. well like she said her you know she's she had to set up the you know Oh the, yeah, the trailers and get things yeah. ready and do things like that. Not all nine and ten. I didn't year olds have are a marketing manager. Kind of things, you know, like. <laughs> and do you crack up so, yeah, too when you talk about young. the trailer thing? Do you crack up when you see those videos on social media? Yeah. Of somebody trying to back the, the trailer boat ramp down? trailer. And you're like eleven. You're like, oh, I can do that for you, right. sir. It's funny. We bought a boat this past year, and I backed the boat like into the uh, water the trailer back into the water and whatever like a boss, and everybody's right? like looking at me like god is that a child in this like big ass <laughs> truck <laughs> like, good. it's pretty funny I like that. the looks like it like, like oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah a little uh, i gotta I like this. jump out of the truck like <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god yeah nobody was there to do it for me you know i didn't have a marketing manager to make all my race perform uh Portfolios. Yeah, yeah, portfolios yeah, 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 yeah. or anything like that. I had to do it myself and yeah. I, I just learned, you know, and so I think that's really helped me. But I think that, that honestly, the ones that we were talking about this earlier, 
the ones that really do something are the ones that try, fail, try, yeah. fail, try, Themself. fail. The, the yeah. school of hard knocks yeah. again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's learning from your mistakes and figuring out how to do it right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'm glad I started at such a young age because I think it's definitely going to help me, you know, progress in so many years and look like, hey, look how far you've come from the age of nine and then to the age of 15 and then to yeah. the age of 21. Like, yeah. where are you going to be in the next 10 years? What's going to come next? And it's like Teresa said, I think it's just time to like recap on everything, yeah. set back and kind of be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This yeah. is what I want to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think that it's okay to change your mind, right? You don't have to be like, well, I wanted to do this when I was 15. Sure. And now I'm, you know, let's say you fast yeah. forward 25. I That's not fitting for me anymore. Right. And, I, and sometimes I don't think people really like stop and think about. Allow life yeah, to happen. Allow yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely we have those chapters in life like mm -hmm. that. So what is that, you know, at yeah. that time? doesn't have to stay the same. No. For sure. As long as you love it. Well, uh, let's see. We, ha we have some good questions here, huh? Yes. To finish. Yes. I'll probably state this a little <laughs> different. Uh-oh. I was going to... I got to reword like, this. Do you want to approach it? So, I was going to take a drink of water, but I'm so, just going to... No, no, no. You out. can t take a drink of water. I promise you. I promise you want. So... I want you to think about a person who you would like to sit down, have a meal with, have a conversation with, enjoy their company, and they can be living or not living. Better, right? <laughs> well, you started out at the end with that, so yeah. Yeah, better. <laughs> I like I it. Better, better. Hands down, without even like thinking about that question, Jesse Combs. Aww. That's yep. beautiful. Yeah. And we touched and on it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, why? I honestly like... I just loved her demeanor, what she was in the motorsports uh, for. Yeah. You know, she was in the motorsports for a certain reason. It wasn't about, you know, looks. It wasn't about her body. It wasn't about, you know, I'm a female. It was, no, I want to be badass, and this is what I love doing, and that's yeah. what I'm all about. And so, like, just to sit down in conversation and just be like, wow. Like, yeah. you were so amazing. Like, I want people to look up to me the way I looked up to her. Yeah. Oh, I think you're yeah. well on your way, young lady. Yeah, thank you. Well yes. on your <laughs> way, for sure. I always think to myself, okay, what would Jesse do? Yeah. What, would, oh, what would Jesse do in this yeah. situation? Yeah. That's the phrase. No, <laughs> yeah. totally. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah, I think that, and I, I know I speak for myself, the most amazing conversationalist and the most amazing woman to push another woman so she was a girl's girl 100 you know what i'm saying she was that person that you know i mean and if i'm being as blunt as blunt gets she wasn't that person that would be your friend and then talk shit behind your back right yeah, 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 yeah. and there is that in this industry and you have to be very careful you know but she was that person that she was left she was there she for you yeah, you yeah. know like she was gonna be your friend she yes, was your friend 100 so, yeah. she was there for you and she was all in and i'm i'm so about that yeah. I, I just love that See, and that carries on that legacy, too. And I think that for women your age, that's that's why you're where you are. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank for you. Sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> thank you. We're yeah. fans. Oh, I know. I'm you. fancy, you, you guys. And you do. No, and you, and you hold those things, that mindset and that... Um, the qualities like you're sharing, like you carry those as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's, that's what I really want to stand for is just, you awesome. know, be true. Wait, like, I think it needs one of these. <laughs> it is. Oh, oh, let's hear it. <laughs> Gotta have those. Okay. So now, uh, if you could have any vehicle, motorcycle, what would it be? And where would you drive it or oh, ride gosh. it in the world? Well, honestly, because this is very like a topic in my life right now, is <laughs> gosh, I would love a trophy truck. Right, right. <laughs> and and I would love to go out there. there. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I would love to go out there and just, you know, oh, beat those boys' butts. Yes, I really, I really think, would. I really yes. think that we need to see yeah. a young lady yes. in that space. Yes. Yeah, right now right there, there isn't. Yeah. Right there in that driver's seat. Yeah. At least give and, it a shot. And where shot. would you want to, uh, what race would you pick or where would you I would. Choose? I honestly, like, my dad and I have talked about it so much is moving down towards Mexico and, you know, touching in to that dirt 
Okay. It's so different from here. I like it touching in. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, you're just in to be girl. You're not girl. You're, you're I just want a taste of it. Do you the 500 or the 1,000? Which one? That's what I would like to do. You could do sample and do You could just start there. But yeah, like I would definitely, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that I'm going to be a pro down there right right at first, but you know, true talk, I would love to go down there. Why couldn't you be a finisher? Right? Oh, I no, no, she's oh, a I pro. Would be. She just said a <laughs> oh. pro. Oh, she you know, like, I don't no, want to be she, like, oh, I'm going to go on kick everybody's butt. She just said, I'm not going to be a pro right at first. Yeah. Amal, let me, let me, yeah. <laughs> Give me some there. time. Yeah. I need to practice and I'm good. She'll finish, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we're finishing. I don't care how long it takes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love, I love it. for you. Thank I love you. it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yay. Well, perfect. I think that unless we have anything else to, what do you want to talk about? I think we're <laughs> good. I think we're we good. covered we're it. Good. We're all good. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I <laughs> okay. don't even know. Listen, you don't. Here. He's doing sign language and he thinks I'm going to forget how to do this. She's going to say, okay. <laughs> So, Brooke, <laughs> you can cut all that bullshit oh, out. How do you, yeah. <laughs> so, I was going to put it at the tail end because it's know, not in yeah. my notes. Yeah. So, it's not in my notes. So, Brooke. Yes. You got to tell our fans, our audience, how they can find you. Because yes. I know they want to find you. <laughs> you can follow me all over social media. Uh, my Instagram is at uh, brooke.jensen.racing. Uh, you can find me TikTok, Facebook, all of the fun stuff, YouTube. And spell your name too. It's B-R-O-O-K. Yeah. And then Jensen, J-E-N-S-E-N. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. So I, much fun. I love it. I love it. Oh, <laughs> so great having you on today. Thank you. Rad. We finally made Yay! it happen. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you guys, Woo! thanks so much. This is... <laughs> He's, over, again, he's huh? over there standing up doing like, some other stuff. Stop looking at me. Oh, gosh. Thanks so much. This is High Octane Hustle. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And this, this was... Brooke Jensen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And uh, if you can please support our mission to share more stories of um, badasses like Brooke. Hit like and subscribe. Make a comment down below. Until next time. 